you had a, 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 a an, an employed person, and so let's take that person on the on the left hand side. If they if they were an employee, they're going to always be a W two person, and they're going to always have hospital employee benefits, and that that can potentially be, uh, and it, you, you have to just run the numbers because that that can potentially be a problem to put all your physicians under your under your hospital benefits and. It isn't for everybody, but you have to just run the numbers and see whether it is for you or not is for you. It, it, for some of our hospitals, it causes a problem because your physicians are, are, are uh, at the higher income level and it causes retirement problems. And it may or may not cause that problem um, for, for you guys. And also the benefits may or may not be kind of where you, <coughs> where you want them to be. Um, the, the other thing is, is that as, as employees, they actually fall under your personnel policies. And so because they fall under your personnel policies, you, you either have to write specific policies for that class of employees for how they're handled for, for things like discipline, uh, because otherwise you have to, you have to um, I mean, they, they, have, they have PTO like everybody else has PTO, um, and you have to track it like everybody else has PTO or vacation time. Um, uh, or they, or, or or you have to somehow figure out how to treat them differently, and, and um, uh, which is which can be a can be a problem. Uh, I mean, the, the the main thing with when you make somebody an employee, you uh, many of the employee things people all all have to be treated the same. Mm -hmm. And so when you when you throw when you throw the physicians in there and you try to treat physicians at, at like all the other employees, that can be a little cumbersome sometimes. Not not always. And, and there are some ways, sometimes you can adjust that for them. Sometimes you can do contracts for them. And if you do, you can still do contracts for them even though they're W-2 employees. And you can, and in the contracts, you can separate out some of those issues in contracts. So for example, you could, you could give them a little bit different vacation time because you did it in a contract, which would exempt them a little bit from the, um, uh, from the regular PTO system if you did it that way. Um, and again, you could make some adjustments in your personnel policy to a, to a, address them, but you'd have to make adjustments in your personnel policy to a, to a employee policy, just like any other employee does. Uh, and that's that can be a real benefit because in that case, uh, when when a suit is filed against an employee uh, under the Tort Claims Act, the employee has to be dismissed, and, and the suit is actually against the entity under the um, Tort Claims Act. Um, so that's. There, there is a benefit having them as employees from that perspective. Now, if you look at the other side, I call them 1099s. They're only 1099s if you contract with them. Do you, are your, yours are employees. So yours are still W-2 employees under the, even under the, the, um, the nonprofit medical corporations, yours are still um, W-2 employees. They still have different benefits. They're just benefits on that side rather than on the hospital side. Now, they do have a separate, um, insurance policy uh, and and so they there's a separate defense and and some separate expense for that separate uh, insurance policy well there's, there's, there's no significant cost with a 501a i mean you, you have to go the registration process you know every couple years but there's not a there's not a significant cost associated with maintaining the 501a kind of interesting on the benefit side right now one of the things that we've talked about is is that particularly now that we've changed the benefits on the hospital side to where the employees are making a significant larger uh, contribution to the, uh, you know, to the to their health insurance and in our, our, uh, uh, our retirement plan and all that where on the physician side of the 501A side, you know, we pay the, we pay the entire cost of the, uh, of the health insurance for, uh, you know, for the physician and we also they have a retirement plan now which we we participate in. So if they were to come over to the uh, to the uh, to the hospital, we'd have to reconcile those, those differences, particularly on the highly highly compensated on the uh, on the health insurance. And we'd have we'd have to figure out how to how to manage that piece of it. Well, and I would say those are two pieces that you that you probably you're not going to be able to reconcile with because, like, you can do things like you can you can make exceptions on things like like PTO. You can give them different PTO. But you're not going to be able to make their health insurance or their retirement different. The health insurance or retirement that you do for all your employees is going to have to be exactly the same. So, so if you bring them over, they're going to have to be on the health insurance and retirement that everybody else is on. Well, when we see 
THC, they wouldn't allow us, they wouldn't cover the benefits for them. They wouldn't put the physicians on their benefits. Well, and they wouldn't because it screws up their benefit plan because they're highly compensated. And they, they, they probably 